The Sony A7 series of cameras are groundbreaking because they really bring cutting edge technology to the consumer market. But I think they're flawed in one very critical way, especially for those of us who want to control our cameras through a wired remote control. And that's because Sony chose to use the multi-terminal for all wired inputs into the camera. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get beyond that limitation, hack the multi-terminal and regain full remote control over your A7 camera. Hi, my name's Elliot Lowndes and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a professional wildlife camera operator and I often want to use my cameras in very specialist or niche applications and I came across this roadblock with the multi-terminal when I wanted to make a video camera trap with my Sony a7S. Now I know camera traps you can just buy online off the shelf uh, but they're often low quality they have an auto exposure function so the image quality really isn't very good and I was really impressed with the low light capability of the Sony a7S in particular so I really wanted to harness that capability as a wildlife filmmaker in a video camera trap but I found it extraordinarily difficult so here's how I went about fixing it. Sony offer a few options for remote control of your camera but they all require me to press a button in order to start recording video whether that's through a cable, through infrared or from your smartphone. I really need to be able to start recording video through a sensor or through a pressure plate, basically an electrical or mechanical switch being closed. So my first thought was to take one of these cabled solutions from Sony and cut open the multi-terminal cable. I thought that I could close two connections in order to start a start record signal and I knew that was true for taking a photo because you can get a basic cable to plug into any remote shutter release to take a photo but on opening one of the cables and trying to close the connection, trying to short the circuit, nothing happened. So I knew that the wired Sony remote must be doing something that I didn't understand. Something that was happening inside that black box. So I decided to open it up and take a look. And as you can see, it's a little bit more complicated than just opening and closing a circuit with the button. It's first going through some sort of microcontroller or processor which is sending a complicated digital signal back to the camera. Now if I knew more about electronics, perhaps I could figure out my own cable with this microcontroller integrated, or I could just try and piggyback off this circuitry that Sony's already made. This remote control in particular is quite expensive. I'll put a link to it in the description below. So I didn't really want to mess this up. And it's really quite useful for just normal tripod work. So I can start recording video without touching the camera. So I decided to experiment on a cheaper knockoff version that you can find on Amazon. So I bought the FOTGA version, but I bought it for around $30. And what was quite good about it was I opened it up and the circuitry was actually a little bit more easy to understand than in the Sony version. The microcontroller was still there, but most importantly, the points at which I could solder a new connection or a switch were a lot more clear on this knockoff version. Using my multimeter, I started to investigate all the potential solder points along the circuit board. I found that all the points along the left were basically connected to ground, and I assumed the ground in the camera as well. Then I isolated points which could trigger the various functions that I needed. Using two 3.5 millimeter jack sockets, I then wired the ground to the collar part of each of these sockets. And then it was just a case of assigning a function to a socket. So on one socket, I assigned a power on off function. So closing a circuit through that socket would turn the camera on or off. For the second socket, I actually wired two functions. First of all, an autofocus signal or awake signal if the camera had been put to sleep by the first socket. And then the second function I wired to this second socket was a start record signal. I added some other functions to the box as well. I added a button so I could put the camera to sleep as I finished setting up the video camera trap. I also added a switch that let me turn the autofocus function off from that second socket. And basically that was anticipating future situations where I want, might want the ability to take photos or videos from a remote location. So less of a video camera trap, but perhaps running cables from my interface box to a set of buttons where I could sit in a hide and 
control the camera remotely via a cable loom. So I'm really happy that I've got past this issue with the multi-terminal and I've got much more flexibility now to be able to control my camera in the way I want and use it in applications which weren't before possible. So the next stages will be to build a weatherproof housing for my camera for those times that I want to use it as a video camera trap and obviously testing it in the wild as well. I'll also be building a control box for the times that I want to remotely control my camera via cable but remain a distance away from my subject. So I'm going to be making videos about those things as well. If that sounds interesting to you and if you enjoyed this video then please subscribe and I'll see you next time.